Well, I, I tell you what, I, I, I couldn't be happier. Um, we wanted to cap that at 36 plays. Um, it was scripted in the sense that we, we knew the number of plays. We wanted the ones and ones against twos and twos to get, and then uh, bonus plays there with our threes. Um, really, through pr six practices, I've been very impressed. Having what I what I always consider a negative practice, we haven't had one yet, you know, where you just felt like you haven't got done what you needed to get done. The kids have had great attitude, uh, a lot of great energy. I think there's some great competition going on out there, uh, not just ones, twos, and, and threes, but just, you know, some of our better players that maybe know they're the better player, they're the best player on their team. They're, they're, what I've challenged them is to kind of compete against the rest of the SEC and the rest of the country if you're at that level. So I thought there's some guys really, you know, uh, standing out. Uh, a couple things just injury wise. I know everybody saw Keon um, on uh, Thursday, just made a routine play over on the sideline, and we were in half pack, so he bruised his knee, um, but, but nothing, uh, nothing overly serious. He had some, had some uh, swelling just due, due to the bruise, nothing structurally. So um, he may be out. We're going to, we're going to, Take that one for for uh, the time that it needs, either a week to maybe two weeks, um, but uh, should be back in time. He up to that point, it had a really, really great uh, winter conditioning, great leadership. I, I couldn't ask for anything more out of him, um, and uh, get him back obviously sooner than later. Uh, also, Alex Volsky, uh, right before spring break, kind of tweaked his back. Um, again, nothing structurally, just just irritated some soft tissue that. Uh, um, they they uh, gave some treatments and could have went today, but we just felt with a senior. I wanted to see Jack Krause and Will Gregg continue to grow, so uh, we kept him out. Should be back with us on Tuesday. Um, I really think during the course of the scrimmage, I know uh, um, uh, Denzel got a little bit banged there, but I don't think there's anything serious. So we came out of it pretty pretty healthy. The guys that didn't go today, we knew all along they weren't going to go today. We got three guys with the shoulders, uh, Mitch Laven, Kevin Richardson, uh, and Datrion Dean. Those guys are on track. They get about half the practice um, and shouldn't have any problems. And then uh, Sleepy, uh, um, B. Lou, um, and I think there's one other guy. Um, we can't think of it right now. Those guys are are, are going to be with us during the during the course. Oh, J Day, um, Juwan Day, of course, won't be with us during the course of the spring. Um, as far as football wise, I, I really like the way the ones are competing. I thought Brandon Allen has continued to grow. You saw him make some throws today that were were pretty impressive. I think offensively, our guys haven't missed a beat. The new wrinkles that we brought with with some of the things that Dan uh, uh, has installed have been very very positive. I thought our guys. Uh, for the most part, lined up uh, with the ones. We kind of have an expanded playbook uh, with the twos and the quarterback situation going on there. I really wanted to play basic football, see who can play on both sides of the ball. Uh, so some guys jumped out uh, really, really on both sides. Um, I was excited to see that. I didn't want to see our twos uh, slowed down because of the way we were calling things or the volume of the of the calls we were making. And I think that worked out very, very well. Um, as well as in our punt game, I thought uh, uh, before before we got rolling the scrimmage there, we did eight live punts and, and uh, uh, very, very happy with the, that phase of the game as well. So some good things. Um, we'll, we'll jump into this next week. Next Saturday, I'll open up uh, the scrimmage to the public. and. Uh, hopefully have a chance to, to get a good good crowd in there and uh, it'll be the biggest scrimmage besides the uh, besides the spring game so hopefully have a good growth next week next week we'll put in short yardage uh, uh, offense and defense which will allow us to then to m play a little bit and move the ball next week uh, on scra on Saturday uh, to get a good feel for where we are put the 40 second clock in with our quarterbacks uh, and make everything work so with that open up for questions yeah you know, Hawk uh, ran track. Um, Rock on it. Uh, you know, Hawk has had kind of a growth, steady growth since last spring. Um, he just is. He's serious. He's engaged. Um, he, he's a kid that uh, I think likes the game. Um, you know, I think in today's day and age, when you don't play as a freshman or sophomore, everybody's like, "Well, what's wrong?" Well, you know, he's getting ready to be a junior. Um, uh, I think he's got to continue to grow. And, and we knew we could run. He caught the ball well, and we, we've obviously. Uh, need players to step up at that position, so I couldn't be happier for him. Like yeah, I tell you, um, you know, we knew we were going to hold Jay Will out. I grabbed Alex this morning and said, "Hey, you're going to scrimmage today, and you're going to scrimmage next Saturday. We'll make a, a determination of where you're at." He's uh, got a little heavy on spring break. Uh, went down and enjoyed Fort Lauderdale um, uh, home cooking. I think a little too much, but uh, um, he's going to go next Saturday. But I even kind of pulled him down there. We were going to have him finish the red zone set, but after I saw him make that run, I didn't need to see. Much more, you know. He's he's probably has responded very well to Jamal as as well as I could have hoped, and um, I think Jamal has brought some things to all those guys that they've really, uh, really 
uh, bonded well, and you could see the results on the field. Yeah, you know, I, 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 a great point. Uh, we moved Brooksy to Will, and uh, you know, I've coached linebackers my entire career, and I've kind of always had a, a, a I think, a pretty good insight into where a kid might fit. And you know, we played Brooksy and Mike really the last two years just out of necessity because we really didn't have anybody uh, at that spot. But I've always kind of thought he's more of an edge player, a Will um, or a Sam, and we moved him to Will immediately in January. He's been a, a nonstop. Um, Bookworm up in the offices with Coach Hargraves. Again, not to uh, belabor the point, but Vernon is a very technical, um, uh, a really good hands-on at, at footwork, hands, hands drill work, and those guys have just flourished. Him and Josh uh, really have done a nice job. Brooksy, uh, you know, as we know, well, he's pre-med. He's going to be, you know, operating on one of us someday. So hopefully, he's smart, um, and and he he really has bought in to what that will is. He understands the game, he understands the patience, and he's very active. He made a, a play on a toss play to the left where he ducked under a block and came out the backside and still still made the play against Alex, which anytime you show that type of versatility, gets you pretty excited. I think he's engaged with it and hopefully going to put himself in a great position. It looked like Austin Allen was pretty sharp today. I yeah. Mostly. You know, and it was good because he uh, um, uh, maybe uh, right before spring break had a really good couple practices. Came back, uh, yeah, I would say Rafe had a better week of practice during uh, Tuesday and Thursdays, uh, but Austin showed up today. Kind of, I go back to that old Miss game, you know, he just came in and he's a game day player. Um, he takes a better control of the huddle. We've been on him about that and, uh, you know, he's doing what we expected him to do. But I would say uh, between him and Rafe, uh, you know, those two are really uh, continue. You know, Ty's doing a lot of really good things. It's just coming at him, uh, you know, shoot, he should be going to prom tonight instead of watching film with us, uh, you know, those guys that come in early in January. So um, I couldn't be happier with the three backup quarterbacks, but I think Rafe and, and uh, Austin really uh, are matching shot for shot. It seems like there's a little bit more zip coming out of the, of the ball. ball of their hands yeah. uh, from all of them. Is, have you noticed that? Yeah, I do. I think first, uh, you know, obviously they're older and they're more mature and Coach Herbert, but uh, all of the quarterbacks have commented just on the fact that Coach Enos has brought some things, you know, from throwing the ball, uh, to footwork, to being able to play with their feet underneath them, stepping up in the pocket, um, doing some little things that affect velocity, and, and uh, it's very, very evident. Tackle the way y'all did today is impressive. Yeah, impressive. you know, it's classic uh, Rob Smith syndrome. I mean, it, as we all know, he's a very short, angry man. He, uh, um, first thing I grabbed him, I think he goes, man, our tackling sucked, you know, which I get because he got mad about two or three uh, missed tackles, but a couple of those were against Alex, who I think is a very good running back, and I couldn't be happier. I think our offense came out a little juiced. It was in their favor, you know. We came out uh, all first downs, and they made I think three straight, and then the defense finally made a stop and played pretty well after that. But there were some big hits, good collisions. You know, we're putting our defense at a disadvantage as well. We're not allowing any tackles below the belt line, so a lot of those missed tackles I think would have been eradicated uh, if we were allowing them to cut tackle and and go low on those guys. So. Uh, again, Rob, I, I, I would tell you, when we have we've had a lot of a lot of traffic from coaches when we go out on the speaking circuit. Um, one of the best things I've witnessed in football is that tackling circuit that Rob brought with him, and and the emphasis that that uh, Vernon and Clay and and Rory put on that have been very very important. What did you want to see from the offense different that you hoped Coach Enos would bring in, and, and how how's that going so far? You know, I, I would say. Uh, Two things jumped out to me, Bo. There is very little confusion with our more experienced players going in and coming out of the huddle. You know, there's no looking around, what do I got? Uh, I think they're able to play faster and more aggressive because they're not thinking. Um, the, the calls have condensed by quite a bit, uh, which allows, I think, just a little bit, you know, our basic hog and ease. I know everybody makes fun of it, but that has been tremendous uh, with our players. And then just uh, they're playing with a little bit of a confidence and tempo that, uh, you know, even though, like, I take a play, if you remember early on, I think it was uh, uh, whoever jumped off sides. So we went from a third and four to a third and nine, and we changed the call. BA threw a nice little dig route and converted, you know, and to have that confidence after you get punched in the face with a setback, um, that comes from veteran experience. And, you know, to have a fifth year senior quarterback is, is, uh, is everything I'd hope it'd be. Yeah, Drew Morgan, just what do you perceive uh, out of him? Hey, great question. I think Drew. You know, he's just one of those guys that lingers around. And I, I had a feeling today uh, with, with, you know, because Thursday, Keon practiced really the whole day. He got injured towards the end of, of practice. So it was the first time those wide receivers had been out there without their main guy. And I really thought, um, 
either him or, or JC might pop out, and it was Drew today. You know, now a little bit luck of the draw. You know about rotation and and where we're going. But Drew is uh, the only person to stop Drew is Drew. You know, I'd, um, I he went through a little bump in the road last semester. Uh, you know, just getting his life in order and doing some things right and uh, getting himself back on. You know, I, I kind of challenged him one day. You know. The, a couple of things came across my desk, and I'm like, "This isn't the Drew Morgan that I recruited." You know, I don't, I don't need to get on you about these things. This should be part of your daily life, and and hopefully, he had a little bit of uh, uh, coming to reality, and has, has performed very, very well coming out of spring break. And hopefully, it's a, he's got great hands. He's intelligent. Um, he doesn't lack any confidence. He's, if anything, he he's, he's a little bit too confident at times. Um, so I'm excited to see where he goes. Yeah, you know, you know, you know, I wish. I wish I had five of them, uh, you know, and, and he, he's a guy last uh, fall, whenever I go watch the offense, every day of practice, he'd have like 20 practice, 20 tackles. You know, his dad, I think, played in the league for like 10 years, just a uh, tremendous, tremendous uh, vision. Um, he's not as tall as you'd want him to be, you know, he's probably truly 5'10 and under, but uh, explosive, he's got vision. I think there's a role for him in our defense and on special teams. He always finds himself around the football. Uh, I'm, I'm excited to see where he goes of installation, both sides, just kind of the big picture thoughts. Really, the only thing we got, Tom, we got um, a short yardage, which is really the last key element to put in there. Now, we can put wrinkles on it, but, you know, on, on defense, we don't make a lot of calls. You know, when you go into our defensive game plan, we're going to, you know, go into game day with about 10 basic calls, you know, four that we'll run every play and about four or five specialty calls. So we don't cloud our kids' minds with things they don't need to know. Offensively, uh, we've put in – we really wanted to jump that wide receiver core because I think we got a for the first time in our life where we really can, you know, continue to throw the ball with efficiency. Uh, so I think our best personnel groupings right now, without a doubt, are 12 and 11 personnel. Um, Jeremy Sprinkles had a nice, nice spring as well. So you can know Hunter and Jeremy can flex out and give you some 11 and 10 looks. Um, but I know uh, we want to continue to once we put in our our short yardage package, uh, that'll complete really the the phases of the game. But you know. Uh, Dan is a he's a he's a brilliant guy. You know, I've had a couple guys that have reached out to me now that I've hired him, and they talked about it before I got a chance to be around him full scale. And I think offensively, our our staff and our players have been very impressed with the knowledge that he brings to the table. Are you getting more reps with the? It looks like the, of, maybe more efficient. Yeah, yeah without a doubt, I think um, we've had some. You know, it was good to see uh, Coach Jones. Pat came. Um, back and he's watched us every spring and fall and it's one of the first things uh, he made a comment uh, watching practice film and and then out there early in practice our guys know how to practice now there isn't there isn't you know our third year our coaches know what we're doing our players it's so fun to sit back as a head coach and not realize not have to worry about if everybody knows where they're going where they're supposed to be the temple that we expect here's a little indicator of where we're at we're a good football team don't don't no if hands buts about it we go Thursday's practice and anytime you take them into half pack. So we've been full pads all the way through that we were allowed to. And Thursday, I wanted to scale back and go half pack because I wanted to have the type of day we had out there today. So I, anytime you go half pack, you, you worry that they're going to slow down, get a little grab, grab, grabby, you know, kind of, kind of just kind of become juvenile. And our guys had an unbelievable work ethic on Thursday. So, you know, I, I think the sky's the limit. Um, we got to be smart about how we practice. Uh, I'm better in tune with our athletes now. You know, I kind of, during my first year and even in that second year, I tried to use probably a little bit too much of a cookie cutter approach into what I've done in the past. I've got a different different level of athlete here. You know, I, I got some guys that really can can do some special things um, up front and in the back end, and we gotta we got to maximize those guys. How do you feel like the reshuffle the first team? O-line? You know, I was very pleased. Uh, I think there was a very first play, there was a bust that turned an end loose, you know, on the very first play. But overall, I didn't see a lot of breakdowns. Um, we haven't had many issues at all with the one unit about, uh, there was a penalty that Denver lined up. He wanted to uh, uh, go to replay for that call, but um, he, he he's handled that left tackle position very well. I think him and Sebastian over there form a very, uh, a very uh, uh, staunch um, athletic uh, group that you can run to your right and left. Um, Dan's actually probably performed better at right tackle and than he has any other time at left tackle. And really, uh, Frank Ragnow, as a true sophomore, hit the, hit the sky's the limit. And Mitch Mothers, I would say, is kind of our unsung hero. You know, he's, he's a kid that obviously came in very highly recruited, kind of bounced around since we got here, uh, looked at trying to find guys to, to get in there for him. And he has just 
competed, he's battled, he's, uh, he's absolutely been awesome uh, off the field, preparation, uh, what he's done with his body, what he's done for Herbs in the weight room. Uh, I think Mitch is the guy that's kind of glued it all together. Uh, maybe run eight out there on the D-line, four and four? Just Without a doubt. Um, you know, I think uh, um, two guys that have probably been a nice nice surprise addition to us have been Jeremiah Ledbetter and Yalda for Holt. Both those guys uh, are definitely going to be able to help us in, a, in, a, in some capacity, could possibly even start for us. Um, I think at the inside position between between Yelda and, and uh, um, Bijan and, and uh, Haji in there at the tackle position, or at the nose, at tackle with, um, I think, uh, um, Taiwan's had a really nice spring, and behind him to have uh, a guy like Jeremiah Ledbetter and the ability he has at the R position to have uh, Tevin Beanham come on and push Dietrich the way he has, and Carl Rosser does some nice things, and at an E, Jamichael Winston is kind of our best player there, and you know Jay Call's done a nice job. Anthony Brown, I suspended uh, from the football team; he won't be with us uh, throughout the course of the spring. Um, so that kind of opened up that spot for Jake, and he's done it and ran. And then Mitch Laven, of course, can play that position in the fall and did a really nice job for us uh, last fall, but he's uh, coming back off the shoulder surgery. So we're as deep as we've ever been at the D-line and O-line, and that's probably the number one key to success in the SEC. Brown got a chance to come back? Or is he Not at all. No. no, no, he won't be with us. He hadn't been dismissed, but he's been removed from everything that uh, uh, we have. He won't be with us at all this spring. and. Um, you know, how he handles uh, the things that I put in front of him um, for the rest of the spring will determine if he's with us ever again. So the door's open. Kendrick. Yep, you know, him and, uh, uh, him and Kendrick both, you know, I've given them the option to pursue, you know, looking at other schools. They haven't really done that. Um, I know they want to be here, but uh, this isn't uh, – the University of Arkansas football program is not a right, it's a privilege. And until they realize that, um, that privilege will be taken away. So the door's still open for Kendrick? Slightly. How's – Jojo had a, a really nice day, um, but I saw Mike getting in his ear a little bit. You know, he's just – he's a very talented player. You know, if you took our wide receiver group, he might have the most uh, ability, um, you know, to catch, run, uh, natural instincts of a wide receiver and all that. He's always a little light in the end, but he's got a definite role in our football team, and hopefully he'll continue to grow. I love – you know, he just – he continues to grow. He got a – I was gone about academics. We went through and Thursday we had an academic meeting. And he got a, a, over 90% on a, on a speech he gave in an English class he was struggling in. And just he, he's beginning to, to buy into to, uh, you know, everything affects one another. And I, I think it's good, hopefully a sign of good things to come. What's your place kicking back in order? You know, right now, McFain, I saw him go 100% out there today. Uh, he missed the last field goal from, from 52. I backed him up. I was only going to go uh, to 47 with him, but he was stroking it pretty good. So I backed him up an extra five, and he pushed it a little bit right. But he's, he's really done a nice job. And then uh, Lane Saley and Cole Hedlund uh, have been going back and forth uh, for that number two spot. But uh, if McFain continues to hit it the way he has, uh, he's going to be very hard to beat out. Was I surprised? No. Uh, am I surprised to, to say at the end of the day that we, we were able to do that? I'm very, very happy. I don't, I don't, uh, Jamal Singleton, um, one of the great things I heard before I even met him was about his ball security. I've let him kind of school the offense overall about certain things. We have a ball security circuit that everybody comes through his situation. I think I might even be able to hold the football if I coach by him. I mean, he, he really has some finer teaching points there that were very impressive. Now, that's something we preach every day. You know what I mean? It's just it's taking it to a you know a whole new level of Red Bull and uh, in, in, in emphasis and in results in, in our program because it's just it's not an option. Um, it's part of what we are. You mentioned Brandon Sprinkle earlier. A lot of yeah. made about the tight end, the, uh, the tight end job recruited in the offseason. How do you see improved in the offseason? What's the expectations for him? You know, Jeremy Sprinkle came to us. Well, when we got here, he was 206 pounds, um, a very good athlete that we knew could run. He's now 250, 255. Looks like a different human being. Um, catches the ball extremely well. He's very smart. Um, I think Dan, uh, in particular, has taken a certain liking to him. He saw right away the ability he has and really hadn't captivated it. So he continues to impress us in practice. Um, I think, again, as long as a lot of you have followed, my, followed my, our history when I was at Wisconsin and coming here, we, we believe in tight ends. You know, we've had anywhere from six to eight. There was a time where the Texans had three tight ends. All of them were former players of mine at, at Wisconsin. So we've been able to recruit to that. I'd like to sign three tight ends every year if we can. And uh, if you're a tight end and can play great football, you should come to Arkansas. And, and, and 
I think Sprinkle kind of now sees that from just being involved in our program. Even though we didn't recruit him, he saw how much we used him. I think Derbs last year showed that to him. So I, 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 if we had to play a game tomorrow, I told our coach the other day, our, burst, our best personnel without a doubt is 12. It would be Hunter Henry, uh, Jeremy Sprinkle, two of our top four wide receivers, and then either Alex or, or Jay Will in the backfield. Um, you know, you didn't see Jay Will today, but Jay Will is playing the best football of his career. So uh, it's fun to really see those guys compete. I saw him back on punt return. What, what's the yeah, just I won't be having Jay Will field too many punts. Um, he's he's getting uh, bored, I think, because I limit him in certain areas. So he started going down there and catching them. And he, amazingly, it shows the athleticism he has. Jay Will is probably a lot better athlete than anybody would ever give him credit for. You, you, it, it, like when we get receivers in here, they all want to go catch kicks. They don't want to catch punts. Uh, catching punts is a very unique athletic move, and he and he's actually pretty efficient at it. Just turnovers in general. I mean, it was a pretty clean day. Yeah. But the, for the whole spring, how's that? Been? You know, it's been pretty good. Um, I, I, you know, our players. If you put a ball on the ground, you just take off running. They know it's not an option to come back to the huddle because you just let, you know, you let everybody on that. Not just the. Uh, Ten other guys on the field. You let you let the whole sideline down. Um, you carry the University of Arkansas in your hand when you have that ball, and um, our guys have really bought into it. I thought our quarterbacks did a better job with two hands on the football. We we made that coaching point after Tuesday's practice of last week. Um, uh, I, I just again, it's just those little things. It drives me. You know, when I read about other schools or watch other teams or you know. I saw some teams start having spring ball scrimmages today, so I'll watch those throughout the network on the SEC as well as uh, across the country. And you know, I remember last year reading in the spring game where guys had like seven or eight turnovers. And that just makes my stomach flip, you know. And, and uh, I think our players react the same way. It's we cannot win if we beat ourselves. So that's why we did the uh, hundred yards of up downs at the end. We had six penalties uh, with the ones and twos. Um, uh, I believe five offensive and one defensive, and we we can't play a half of football with six six penalties, and our guys understand that. Now, a couple more ticky-tacky, but I wanted it to be that way. So, you know, we we, uh, we preach our edges. The first edge is mental and physical toughness. Second edge is we're going to play fast and through the whistle. Our third edge is we're going to play clean. Playing clean means you don't put the ball over, you don't commit penalties before or after the snap, uh, and, and you play within the, with the rules that we got. So I think they buy into those three things. Coach, would you look at probably Cody Walker now as the third tailback in that rotation? If, if you play today, if we play today, I would say that's very, very, very fair to say. Although I tell you what, Denzel, um, I'm not going to count on my man from Houston. He he just is a uh, when you put him in there in the fall, he doesn't practice all that pretty. He's he's in every one of our special teams. He's a coach pleaser, um, uh, and I think when you put him into a situation, if we had to do that, he'd excel. Um, but, I, I, you know, J-Day obviously isn't going to be there. I do think that Raleigh Williams can come in and play for us uh, immediately um, just because of the maturity that he brings and, and the opportunity that he'll have. Could you talk about uh, Hackett, Kelly Hackett? Yeah. And I guess he's working in line now. Yeah, he, well, uh, two things. He, we, in our base defense, he plays Sam. Uh, in, our, in our nickel and our cash, he plays Mike. Um, and, and we just want to get our two best linebackers out there. That's why him and Brooksy are out there. Um, uh, he is truly playing Mike, like you're saying, but it's, it's really just a two-backer defense. Um, I would say from last fall to where we are, he's probably been the biggest surprise to me on the defense side of the ball. He has just come back uh, kind of private pile, you know, the old uh, um, uh, full metal jacket guy that got it completely changed who he was. Um, uh, Kalia Hackett comes from an incredible home in, in Atlanta, and um, he has a lot of pride, and I think that first semester we played him. He didn't start playing a lot because he wasn't taking care of his business. I challenged him uh, to do that. He has come back. He's like Vernon's – him and Vernon are in there all the time together. He's over here. I know uh, uh, Martrell Spade came up to me. Uh, Martrell had come in to get a workout on Saturday night, like at 8 o'clock at night, uh, and, and Hackett was up here before we even started spring ball. He's just – he's immersed himself. Uh, he's very, very physically gifted, and he's got a – uh, a great attitude. He's very intelligent. Um, the sky's the limit for him. And you know what? Now all of a sudden you see 11 today. You know, 11 used to be ahead of him, and now 27 went ahead of 11, and, and uh, Hackett went ahead of him. And then Randy, he, Randy played his tail off today. I couldn't be happier for Randy Ramsey, and hopefully that's some more of what's going to come. You guys are awesome. Thank you. Have a good weekend. Happy Easter.